What are the most stressful and least stressful exercises for the patellofemoral joint according to science? Well, in this video, I'll be ranking 35 different knee exercises in a tier list from tier one for exercises with the lowest loads, which are typically gentler on the patellofemoral joint, to tier three for exercises with the highest loads on that joint. And at the end, I'll share my favorite exercise that's not included in the study. Before we jump into each exercise, let's review some basic anatomy. Patellofemoral joint is where the patella, or the kneecap, meets the femur or the thigh bone. The patella sits within the patellar groove of the femur and glides along it as the knee bends and straightens. This joint plays a crucial role in knee extension because the patella increases the leverage of the quadriceps muscle, improving its ability to extend the knee. The joint is lined with articular cartilage, which helps reduce friction and absorb shock during movement. So the forces on the patellofemoral joint are a result of three main factors. The contact area, the force vector between the quadriceps and the patellar tendon, and muscle contraction. First, as the knee bends, the area of contact between the patella and the femur increases. For instance, at 30 degrees of knee flexion, the contact area is about two square centimeters. As the knee continues to flex, this contact area grows, reaching up to six square centimeters at 90 degrees of flexion. This larger contact area helps spread out the load more effectively, which is crucial when choosing exercises that minimize joint stress. Second, the Q angle is the angle formed by the line of pull of the quads muscle and the patellar tendon. When the Q angle is larger, it causes the kneecap to be pulled more to the side. This increases the pressure between the underside of the patella and the outer part of the femur. Quadriceps force is highest near full extension, where the contact area of the patellofemoral joint is smallest. This means that a high force on a small area can lead to significant joint reaction forces. By understanding these concepts, we can choose the right exercises to protect and strengthen the knee. The following exercises are ranked according to three factors. Peak force, impulse, and loading rate. Peak force is the highest load the joint receives during a movement, expressed as a multiple of a person's body weight. Impulse is the cumulative load over each repetition. It's the product of the force applied and the duration of time over which that force is applied. The longer or slower a movement is performed, the higher the impulse. This is expressed as a multiple of body weight seconds and represents the area under the force time curve. The loading rate is the highest rate at which the force changes over time. The faster a movement is performed, the higher this number will be, expressed as body weights per second. These three factors contribute equally to create a single score for each exercise called the loading index. Exercises are ranked and grouped into three tiers based on the loading index. Just one caveat, adding external resistance to any of these exercises like a kettlebell or a barbell will of course change the loading index of these movements. So just keep that in mind. Let's start with tier one exercises, which are excellent entry points into rehabbing patellofemoral joint pain. The first one is walking. So walking is of course a fundamental low impact activity that generates the lowest patellofemoral joint load around 0.6 times your body weight. In addition to cardiovascular and mental health benefits of walking, it's gentle and ideal for the initial rehab stages. Next up is a low step up on a 10 centimeter box. A low step up is performed by stepping onto a platform that's lower than stair height, generating a load of about 1.7 times your body weight. It's a great way to start incorporating weight bearing movements. A partial squat to 60 degrees of knee flexion creates a load of two and a half times your body weight and avoids the deeper parts of knee flexion that can sometimes irritate a painful knee. A low step down on a 10 centimeter box generates a load of 3.1 times your body weight and is a useful exercise to start working on eccentric control of the quadriceps. Moving to a normal height step during the step up exercise increases the load to 3.6 times your body weight challenging the quadriceps even more. Double leg repetitive lateral jumps done very quickly, single and double leg repetitive forward hops generate between 4.2 to 4.9 times your body weight. These exercises introduce dynamic movement while keeping the loads relatively low. 
It may seem counterintuitive that they're included in tier one because they involve jumping, but the impulse and peak forces are small since ground contact time is super fast. Tier two exercises are next up. This is the largest group, so we'll further combine these 24 exercises into three broad categories. Squatting and lunging movements, jumping and hopping movements, and dynamic movements. First up are squatting and lunging exercises. These range from 4.3 to 5.8 times your body weight in peak knee loading. Partial range of motion, single leg squats, sumo squats, double leg full depth squats, all progressively load the knee. Notice how even though single leg squatting shifts your entire body weight onto one knee, the depth of the movement also plays a vital role in patellofemoral joint loading. High step downs, Bulgarian split squats, and lunges all have a higher loading index than range from 4.7 to 5.8 times your body weight. We'll break down jumping and hopping movements into two foot, one foot, and drop jump variations. Double leg repetitive lateral, forward, maximal, and counter movement jumping range from 5.1 to 6.9 times your body weight. Once again, notice how the stress on the patellofemoral joint increases as the speed decreases. More time in contact with the ground means more load going through the knee. Now, moving into single leg movements, the order is very similar because the same pattern applies. These include single leg repeated forward hops, single leg repeated lateral hops, single leg maximum forward hops, alternating split jumps, and a single leg counter movement hop. You'll also notice that muscle force production must increase in order to move the entire body using only one leg, which increases the patellofemoral joint stress. Drop jumps are unique because they create higher ground reaction forces and a faster loading rate due to the added acceleration of gravity when dropping down from a height. Adding an additional jump or hop after the landing increases knee stress. Here we progress from single to double leg landings and single to double leg drop vertical hop and jumps. The last category in tier two are dynamic movements. Surprisingly, running and run and stop movements are near the lower end of patellofemoral joint loads in this tier. During running, the contact time with the ground is very brief and the forces are spread out over a longer stride cycle. So while the peak forces can be high, the overall load per step is relatively moderate. Running involves a rhythmic, efficient movement pattern that allows the body to manage and distribute forces more effectively compared to more abrupt or isolated exercises. The body is optimized to handle the repetitive loading patterns of running. Another caveat though, there are many more variables that increase patella load during running, how long or fast you run, the types of surfaces you run on, and more. As we add dynamic movements like change of direction, the knee loads rise considerably with the run and cut movements hitting a peak load of 7.1 times your body weight. The final tier is reserved for exercises with the highest patellofemoral joint stress. A full depth single leg squat generates a load of 6.9 times your body weight. It checks the boxes when it comes to patellofemoral joint stress. One, it's on the single leg, requiring high force production. Two, it's through full range of motion and three, it takes a longer time to execute the movement, which increases the cumulative load. Next, we have the three second Spanish squat variation involving holding a squat position for three seconds. And that generates a load of about four and a half times your body weight and generates the highest loading impulse. And the exercise that loads the patellofemoral joint the most, at least according to this study, is a single leg squat on a decline surface, generating a load of 8.2 times body weight, the highest peak force load in the study. That decline angle changes the biomechanics of the squat movement, increasing the compressive forces on the joint. Now, one of my personal favorites that's not included here is uphill running. That inclined angle naturally forces you to increase your running cadence, which are the number of steps you take per minute. You can expect a five to 10% cadence increase, which leads to a 10 to 15% drop in patella joint stress. I'd rank it as a good transition option between tier one and two, and it helps you get back to running sooner. 
As you can imagine from this list, the order of these exercises can change by modifying any of the variables we discussed earlier, namely adding external load, modifying the tempo of the exercises, or simply doing more total volume. All right, that's it for this one. Check out this other video here if you haven't already, and I'll see you next time.